So thank you, everybody. My name is Sarah, and I am Program Specialist here with Brilliant Labs Nova Scotia. My name is Jeff. I'm a teacher and a Program Specialist here in Nova Scotia as well. Um, so again, thank you so much for coming today to talk with us all about the leatherback sea turtles. We did some planning today with our partners over at, uh, at Cove, another group that really likes to do some of these uh, types of different types of science activities with students and they focus on the oceans. So when I was preparing for this session and I was doing a little bit of reading online, I came across this picture and it really got me thinking. So this is a leatherback sea turtle, the kind of turtle that we're talking about today. But there's something a little bit strange about this picture. Um, you might notice something on his back. If I zoom in a little bit more, have a look at that. Wow. What do you guys think in your classrooms that that might be on the turtle's back? Well, I did some reading and what I found out was that's what's called a GPS tracker. So a GPS tracker is actually the same thing that's in my phone or that people use in their cars so that they can use different map programs. So what scientists have done with turtles and some other species too, uh, is they've put GPS trackers on these animals and then they can learn from them as they uh, watch how they go around the world. So check this out. I found this map of this specific turtle. Uh, her name is Unia. Um, and this is how far she's traveled. So she's come pretty close to Nova Scotia. And but she travels all the way down past the United States, past Mexico, down past the Caribbean, down to a country called Panama. So by looking at this stuff that the scientists have captured about uh, Unia, Unia uh, She's traveled 12,000 kilometers. That's really, really, really far. And that's just in the last like eight months. It's pretty cool. Wow, that's amazing that, that she's really been, she's quite the travel, traveler about the world. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So the neat thing about leatherback turtles is that they're found in the oceans all over the world. Um, they're found in more places than any other turtle. Um, including the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Nesting beaches are located in tropical places around the world, and but they aren't really good hunters, um, but they have found a really good food that isn't too hard to catch. And this is really interesting because I did not know that they typically only eat one thing, um, and that's not many animals or creatures out there who just eat one thing, but the thing that the turtle, leatherback turtles eat are jellyfish. So maybe you've been at the beach before during the summer and um, sometimes there's warnings or you, that there's a lot of a large amount of jellyfish around or that you can see them and some sometimes can sting and, you know, hurts people, but not the leatherback turtle. Um, so because they're not great hunters, they're able to successfully get the jellyfish um, and a turtle actually has to eat enough jellyfish to match its own body weight every single day. So you can imagine that's quite a bit of time spent on collecting this food and nutrition so that it can move and do all of those great traveling that uh, Unia did. Um, and with, uh, so the leatherbacks have these powerful front flippers and they can swim thousands of kilometers across the open sea as Jeff had highlighted with that, that wonderful visual with the trip that Unia did. Um, and they usually do travel where there are places with a lot of jellyfish and they're so delicious for them they just kind of stay there but they have to follow where the jellyfish go um and then they do go back to warmer places in the summer and that's where they lay their eggs on the beaches yeah so way down on that map down by like panama that's like a really sunny place where there's lots of nice sandy warm beaches exactly um but these turtles, like a lot of other sea turtles, are what we call endangered. And what that means is that there's not as many around now as there used to be. And scientists think that in the future, so like by the time that you're an adult, there might be even less of these turtles. They do have some predators or animals that would hunt them in the wild, like sharks or killer whales, like we call them orcas. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of animals do like to eat leatherback sea turtles. But the biggest problem that these sea turtles have is humans. Mm. So because of things like litter in the ocean, um, 
the turtle might see like it's in that picture, he might look at that and think that it's a jellyfish. He thinks he's it, it eating dinner. Like yeah, yeah. You, can, you can totally understand why if, you know, if you were under the water, maybe it's a bit darker, it might look like food. So a lot of these turtles are dying and it's because of trash that we're throwing in the ocean. There are a lot of other reasons too that, uh, that they're becoming endangered, but uh, that's one that we thought was, was worth mentioning this morning. Very important. So as I mentioned, um, the turtles do go to warmer areas and beaches to lay their eggs and they can lay around a hundred eggs at once. And they, what they do is they dig a deep hole in the sand to bury them. And this keeps the eggs nice and safe until they hatch. And once the eggs hatch, they dig their way to the surface and head for the ocean. There are many different animals that would like to eat them, such as raccoons, which is when I was doing a little bit of reading on this, I thought, well, that's different. I, I don't ever remember seeing raccoons on the beach, but I think that they are kind of nocturnal animals. So they would come out at night and look for those delicious eggs, um, birds, and even dogs, um, such as coyotes, or even, you know, if, if somebody has a dog as a pet and they live near the ocean, it's quite possible that the dog, of course, wouldn't know any better and think that those eggs are food. But out of all of those predators or animals that are a threat to these eggs and could hurt them, humans harm more of these leatherback sea turtles than any other creature. So if someone digs up their eggs, they'll never get to grow into turtles. Yeah, it's true. So I, I guess uh, as, as people, if we knew, if we were in a place where we knew that there was some eggs buried, we would have to be really careful and maybe be uh, some helpers and help protect those eggs. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, in order to do so, there, there's certainly, if you go to beaches in certain areas where there are, you know, endangered species and such as the turtles and their eggs, you might see signs that will warn people about that so that they can see the signs and be aware so they can avoid those areas or at least be, you know, know that they're there and that they're trying to grow and become turtles and, and try to help keep them safe in that uh, stage of their life. Yeah. So this is what we would like you to focus on with our challenge for you today. So we always have a little activity for people to do in school or at home or wherever they're joining us from. So today we're going to think about those eggs on the beach. So they're buried under the sand a little bit and like one little uh, nesting place. And we want to try and come up with an invention that could keep that spot safe. So keeping it safe from those animals that might try and dig it up, but also to try and make sure that it's well marked and uh, so that humans know to stay out of that space so that the eggs can grow into those little baby turtles that get the chance to, uh, to scurry off towards the water. Um, so whatever you have in your classroom or at home is fantastic for materials we were suggesting things like if you have some cereal boxes or mm -hmm. clean uh, yogurt containers or craft supplies you know tape scissors glue all that kind of stuff how could you build something that you could put over that area or close to that area to help those eggs stay safe while they're growing and I love your suggestion, Jeff. So we always like to encourage to upcycle or recycle, repurpose, reuse items when we're doing these projects so that we're also aware that, as we mentioned before, that one of the big problems for turtles are pollution, the plastic bags and things like that in the ocean. So by being aware of that and using these things, making stuff and when we're done making, always making sure that we're, we you know, properly um, take care of what we have afterwards uh, so that it doesn't end up in the oceans. But um, some things that you would want to think about when you're working on this this challenge, this maker challenge, to see how you would protect those eggs. Um, certainly, um, maybe color. You know, it's like mm -hmm. what what color the material you're using. And maybe you want to look and see if turtles can see in color. So if the mother if the mother maybe can't see a certain color, but you choose to make something that color that there's some certain animals can only see like dogs can have a very low range of colors that they can see but if you're to look at that and find out what colors turtles could see that maybe you want to think about if how that might make a difference in what you make you just made let me think of an idea too i was thinking about the predators what what the pictures or colors might keep other critters away from the eggs as well exactly yeah 
So we just put these things up here, just some things to kind of think about. Like we have to make sure that those eggs are getting sunlight so that they're nice and warm. Uh, beaches can be windy, so how will your device stay in place? Um, but this, what we're designing is just kind of like an idea for an invention. So maybe we could give our ideas to somebody who really works with turtles and they could let us know if it's something that could actually be made by scientists and try it out. For sure. I mean, we're never too young or too old to work towards helping our environment and, and working towards a better climate. And that includes protecting our wildlife um, species in all areas of the world, including our own communities. Yeah, this is just a little sketch that I did for an idea when I was making my first design. It's always good to draw it out on paper first so you can kind of picture what you see it being. So I was thinking I could use some pieces of cardboard to make posts. I wanted to make almost like a fence to keep out predators. And I had it over the top as well to keep birds away from it. Uh, but there was also lots of little holes so the little baby turtles would be able to walk out afterwards. So that was my first idea. But I would be... Uh, really interested to see what other people come up with for their designs. For sure. And I, I happen to have this little turtle nice. stuff. I'm not sure. It's probably not the size of um, an average mother and female uh, leatherback turtle, but you want to take into consideration the colors of the turtle too. What we mentioned the colors that they can see and what colors the predators can see or maybe stay away from. And also whether the adult turtle would be able to maybe access those eggs or or what that means. So as far as who's going to be around the eggs, who needs to be around the eggs, and um, who are we keeping away from them? Excellent. And as always, if you uh, if you do have some inventions that you would like to share, we would love to get some in our email, or if your teacher is on Instagram or Twitter, they can share that out so that we can show the world your amazing inventions. We can help you share your big ideas. Um, but for the teachers that are here, if anybody does have any questions or maybe somebody wants to share something before we go, we're right on schedule here. Yeah, we are. And um, it's just putting a note there that, it, you know, it's climate action and saving these um, protected and endangered species it really does start with everybody um, being aware and educated. So this is a great way to keep your mind thinking. And then you can think beyond what other creatures in your area might need some help and how would you protect them? So if we have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop it into our chat. Or if you'd prefer to unmute and ask us, you can do that as well. Okay, well, we really look forward to seeing all of your creations. And I'm so glad that you join us uh, weekly to for these great maker challenges. And we really, really love seeing what you come up with. Some great ideas from our last challenge last week. Yeah, we did just have one question, Roland. They were asking about the name of the turtles. And I, I came across this one. Sarah, did you come across the name of Leatherback Turtles? I, well, no, I didn't actually come know why they're called it. I'm going to presume that they their shell is probably feels a bit like leather or a very thick shell. I know that turtle shells are usually kind of like hard um, under for most of them. But no, I don't know why they're called Leatherback. Do you know? Yeah, that, you're right. That's exactly it. So oftentimes oh, okay. turtles have, you know, we picture that really hard. Like, yeah hard shell but uh these these turtles on top of their hard exterior there is like a, a softer layer that i guess people originally thought it felt a little bit like leather so that's and how they that got their name yeah for sure so that reminds me um that there so we have turtles and then there's a tortoises and the difference between turtles and tortoises now i don't know if anybody here has been to the museum of natural history in halifax but they do have a very famous tortoise named Gus. Mm -hmm. I think that he is quite old. Um, and I know that he doesn't live just in the water. I think that he has access to some water in his area, or at least he used to. But I'm pretty sure that he spends most of his time on land. Yeah, tortoises aren't uh, aren't big swimmers. They definitely live most of their life on land. They eat things like shrubs and bushes and stuff like that. I know I've seen them feeding Gus specifically things like lettuce, so he likes, likes vegetables. Yeah, and you, you, we actually have quite a few different types of tortoises that live within the Maritimes, and sometimes you'll see a turtle crossing the road. I've not, I've encountered a couple of times in my life mm -hmm. where you slow down, and they really do move slowly, but you, you have to be able to let them cross and, and do that on their own rather than picking them up. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for that question uh, to the class that put that in there. 
And I think we will let you get on to the maker challenge. So have a ton of fun coming up with your plan and making um, your first attempt at an invention to help protect turtle eggs on the beach. Helping our turtle friends can start with you. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. Stay brilliant. <laughs>